everyone, it's Chloe from Chloe's Creative Cards. And for this week's Stamp Along, I've actually done a pre-recorded video um, to show you exactly how to make this absolutely beautiful project using our Grande Ponceca Stamp and Die set. We're going to be using lots of different products from the, um, the Ponceca Christmas range. So we're going to be using the Festive Fancies foiled paper pad, the Festive Fancies printed paper pad. We're going to be using the Grande Ponceta stamp and die set, the Winter Foliage stamp and die set. We're going to be using the Holly tag for the sentiment. And we're also going to be using one of our fabulous fancy circle frames as well, just in the background there, just to add an extra little bit of detail. What I'll do, because we're not live today, is I will link the blog post in the comments below so that you can see exactly where you need to go to download your free PDF instruction sheet. So what I've done is I've gathered all of my materials together and we are ready to get started. Now all of my mats and layers are pre-cut to size and all of those sizes and dimensions are on the um, on the free PDF download. So if you hop over to the website and click onto the blog, you will find a stamp along live. This is number 21, I do believe. Um, and you'll be able to click on there and then we'll be able to um, see all of the measurements for the mats and layers and everything. Okay then. So we are going to get started. So what we're gonna to do to start with is, I'm just gonna grab a card one out of the cupboard because for some reason I've left that behind. There we go. Okay then. So I'm going to start with an 8x8 card blank and I think what we'll do to start with actually is we'll make the beautiful poncetta. Then we can be doing our mats and layers and waiting for that to dry, ready to assemble our fabulous project at the end. So to start with, we're going to take a piece of matte silver mirror card and we're actually going to stamp and emboss one of the Grande poncettas onto here. Now we can see this is a really nice large stamp. It is brilliant for creating lovely focal features on your project, but it is also really nice for creating like Christmas decorations. You could be doing some to pop on your Christmas tree. Um, I think I'm going to make some to pop in the garland this year as well. So there's loads that you can be doing with this fabulous stamp and die set. It's a really lovely large image. So what we're going to do to start with is take an anti-static bag. And I've got a piece of our matte silver mirror card. And this is from the... Um, matte mirror card pad that we've got on the website. I've dusted that over with the anti-static bag and I'm going to take a wow clear embossing ink pad now. I'm going to ink up my stamp, lots of light tapping all over the image. I'm really sorry if the camera starts to shake but it's like on a little pole attached to the table. So just give me two seconds just while I ink that up. Okay so you want to make sure that you've got plenty of ink on there and then what we're going to do is place this down on our mirror card and press. Now stamping and embossing onto mirror card is a little bit more tricky because it kind of acts a little bit like acetate, so it can be quite slippy. So what I would always recommend is you keep one hand on the stamp at all times and just use the other hand to press. Okay, then we're gonna lift that away and you can see how we've got that lovely image on the mirror card there. So what I'm gonna do next is take some silver dollar wow embossing powder I'm going to sprinkle this over and then tap away the excess. And you can see, because we've put the anti-static on there, you've got very little stray flecks of your embossing powder on there. So pop this back into the jar. And then we're going to heat this one up with our heat gun. So we're going to hold the heat gun still. And as soon as that powder melts and changes, we are going to move the heat gun over the image. There we go, and you can see how we've got that lovely glittery snowflake on there. Then what you can always do is just take a piece of kitchen roll and buff off any of the excess um, anti-static on there. Okay, we're going to take the Ponceta die next, and we're going to place this over the image. So let me just have a little look to line this up. So that is going to go there. 
about there. Okay, and I'm going to take a little bit of low tack tape, tape that down into place. I'm going to roughly trim around the edge of this one as well because I have just got my Gemini Junior plates out today. So just roughly trim around there. We can keep that little leftover bit for another project. Okay, and then we're going to run this through the die cutting machine. So I've got my die cutting machine just set up to the side of me here. So we'll just quickly run that through. back in you can see how we've got that lovely poinsettia that I put out of the um of the matte mirror card there okay and you can see how nicely that die cuts as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that to one side and we're going to take in two sheets we're going to put well just one sheet to start with hopefully we'll fit two of the poinsettias on here so this is one of the papers from the festive fancies paper pad and this one's just from the printed paper pad it's not the foiled one so this actually works really nicely for stamping and embossing some of your poinsettias and things onto. So what we're going to do is take our anti-static bag again, give the paper a good dust over. Okay, and then we are going to take our Grande Poinsettia stamp again and we're going to ink it up again. Really sorry if the camera moves, but it's just the way everything's set up in here today. see how you can ink your stamp up and then what we're going to do is place this down under the patterned paper so I'm going to pop one I always like to try and work it out so I'll get the most out of my papers as well so I think if I stamp it this way I should probably get two on here so this is the first one so I'm just putting firm even pressure all over the stamp like so and then we're going to lift that away and you can very faintly see where that image is so if I pop my embossing powder over now, just using silver dollar again, you can see how lovely and crisply that's stamped out. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is heat that up again. So I'm going to pop that powder back into that jar. And then we'll just quickly heat this one up. So we're just going to hold that heat gun still. And then as soon as that powder melts and changes, we are just moving that heat gun over the image. Okay, so we can see that one there. So what I'm going to do is stamp another poinsettia in the bottom corner. So again, just giving my card a little, my paper a little dust with the anti-static bag and then just re-inking my stamp. Okay, and then what we can do, this is where clear stamps really do come into their own because you can kind of just hover till you get, obviously you're getting the most out of your paper this way and then press. So again, you want firm, even pressure. All over the image. Then we're going to lift that off and we're going to cover that with the silver dollar again. Just tap away any excess powder. So then go straight back into the jar. And then we'll heat this one up again. So again, just holding your heat gun still until you see that powder start to melt and change. Like so. So then you can see the bling and the sparkle that we've got on there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to trim these out roughly again, just using my old scissors here. And they'll just fit onto my plate for my Gemini Junior. Okay, and then we're going to take our die and we're going to place this over the top. Like 
So you want to get your die lined up into position and then you are just going to tape that in place. So I always hold mine in place with a couple of bits of low tack just to make sure then that it shouldn't really move too much when you run it through your machine. So I'm just going to put my plates together and run this through my Gemini again. So you can just see that the how lovely this die cuts out. Okay, so that's this one. Sorry, it would help if I showed you, wouldn't it? <laughs> so you can see the first one there. And then we're gonna do exactly the same with the next one. So again, we're just gonna line the die up perfectly over the top. Get my plates out of the way, because they're a little bit bored. Get myself in a right knot here, aren't I? So we're just going to line this up. Like so. It's going to get taped there. It's going to get taped there. And then we're going to run this through the die cutting machine again. And then we're going to take this away like so and you can then see how that's perfectly die cut out so again i'm going to pop that over to one side and we will come back to that in a moment we're actually finished with the grand poncetta die now so i'm going to pop mine back on the backing card and pop it back into its little pouch like so there we go okay then so pop these plates to one side and what we're going to do next is we are going to take a piece of heat resistant acetate. Okay, again, it is really important that your acetate is heat resistant. Because what that means is when you heat it, it's not going to melt. Okay, in effect. And obviously we don't want to be heating it up and for it to be melting. So we're going to take that lovely Grand Poncetta stamp again. And we're going to ink that up with our Wow Clear embossing ink pad. Okay, and then we are going to place this down under the heat resistant acetate and then we're going to press. So you want firm even pressure all over the stamp. Now again, acetate's a little bit more tricky because what you can find is your stamp can slip and slide. So what I tend to always do is keep one hand on the stamp and then just use the other hand to press. Then when you lift that off, we will have a lovely poncetta image there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take that lovely silver dollar wow powder again and we're going to sprinkle that over the top. Pop the excess back into the jar. And then we're going to heat this up. So to heat it up, I'm just using my heat gun, holding my heat gun still. And then as soon as I see that powder melt and change, I'm just moving that heat gun over the image. And what you will find is on the heat resistant acetate, your embossing powder will melt so, so quickly. So there we go. But you can see, can you see all the bling and sparkle that you've got there with your wow powder? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm actually going to just cut this out by hand rather than using the die. And I do tend to do this with acetate because in effect what you'd be doing is you'd be cutting a plastic. And what you can find is when you do that, it kind of, your embossing powder can crack. Whereas if you just use your scissors, you can just cut up to the end. You don't have to be kind of too precise about it or anything like that. And then you can just trim round. Like so, okay. So you can see how we've got that nicely dyed, uh, um, cut out. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to sit down to do this bit to show you. Sorry, I was stood up while I was stamping there. 
is we'll start to build up the poncetta. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to take my two patterned paper ones first. And I'm going to use a little bit of our um, Diamante Sparkle, Sparklicious Glitter, which is absolutely beautiful. It is such a lovely, bright, silvery colour. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in and add little dots of PVA. Oops. My glue seems a little bit blocked. It was very cold in here this morning when I came in. I have to say, so I'm wondering if it's just got a little bit, a little bit cold, maybe. But we're just going to add some little dots of PVA just into the middle of the petals like so. Can you see that there? Okay. And then we're going to cover that with the glass, uh, with the Diamante Sparkle Glitter, sorry. So when we tap over the excess, you can see how pretty that then looks. So I'm going to do that on all of the petals on here. So I'm just going to work around. I'm really sorry if I keep moving my mat as well. I'm trying to be really careful and keep everything straight but I can't actually see what's what's filming which is always a challenge isn't it but okay so I'm just going in and adding these little dots of the PVA glue just into the background like so just adding these up the middle of the petals and then we'll just sprinkle over the glitter and tap away the excess, like so. So if I hold that up, can you see all the bling and sparkle that we've got on there? So again, I'm gonna pop that one to one side and I'm gonna do exactly the same with the other um, poncetta. So just working our way from the middle up over like this. Adding in all of these little dots of glue. Okay, and then I'm going to cover this with the Diamante Sparkle Glitter. So we'll just sprinkle over the excess, over the excess glitter from the paper here like so and then you can see how we've got all of that lovely glitter going on the flower there i'm going to pop this one back in pop this glitter back into the jar and then what we'll do is start to actually shape the flower and build it up so i'm going to take my matte mirror one first and i'm going to just give the petals a very gentle little curl just between my finger and thumbs then you can kind of lift the petals up a little bit if you want to as well okay and then what we're going to do is i'm actually i'm not going to start and shape them because i'm just thinking it will probably be better to leave our glittered ones to dry so i'm going to pop my matte mirror on to one side and i'm going to grab in my acetate layer and what we're going to do with this one is again we're going to add little random dots of glue all over the petals like so and then I'm going to take my silver gilt glitter and this is one of my absolute favorites at the moment just look at the reflection and look at that sparkle that you get off this glitter it is absolutely beautiful so you can take that over and then tap off the excess and if I hold that up can you see how you get all of these little glints of sparkle okay so I'm going to pop that one to one side as well and you can just you can see that glitter is just amazing so I'm going to pop that back into the jar quite carefully. Oh, it seems to expand this one. I feel like I need, do you know, like my big Tupperware lock and lock containers. I feel like I need one filled with this colour because it's just so delicious. It's absolutely gorgeous. So what we're going to do now while we're waiting for our poncettas to dry is we'll build up our foliage elements. So we'll do a little bit of stamping and embossing for those. Then those can be drying and we'll, while, while we're waiting for those to dry, we'll build up the background. Okay, does that seem like a good plan, everyone? 
So, to do our foliage, I am using the beautiful Winter Foliage Stamp and Die Set. So basically, within there, you can see that you get lots and lots of different foliage designs. Okay, so you are getting pine branches in there, you were getting little holly leaves, you've got little um, kind of fir branches and things. My stamp has got glitter on the back, so it won't stick to the block. There's a surprise in here, right? Everywhere's very glittery in here at the moment. Okay, so just give that a little wipe with a baby wipe. There we go, that'll stick now. Okay, so you can see I've picked four of the different elements from here. So I've gone for the pine branch, the double one, the single branch, this little kind of branchy spray, and I've gone for some holly leaves as well. And what we're going to do is take a piece of crystal white card, okay? So I'm actually using my leftovers. Do you know from when you cut your matting and layering down? I'm using my leftovers from there. And then we're going to ink power stamps. So again, clear embossing ink pad. Light tapping all over the image. I am trying to be lighter with my tapping because I feel like I always knock the camera. I probably end up like really at a weird angle by the end of this. Okay, then what we're going to do is place this down and press. So you want firm even pressure all over the stamp. Then we're going to lift that away and you can very, very faintly see there where our stamped image is. We're going to cover it with that beautiful silver dollar wow powder and then we're going to heat this one up so again just using my heat gun holding the heat gun still as soon as that powder melts and changes we are just moving it over the image Things and trying to show myself at the same time. I always think mixed it. There we go, that looks. There. Yeah, that is all nicely heated. So I'm going to do exactly the same again. So I've got another bit of crystal white, little dust over. And we'll take our stamps, ink them up again. Let's attach them. Then we're going to place that down and press. So again, we want firm, even pressure all over the image. Tap off the excess. And then we're going to heat this up. can see again how we've got all of that lovely bling and sparkle on there so again i'm just going to roughly trim out i do always like to do that i'm just going to check where we are with the camera and things there okay and then we're going to take in the dies so we're going to line these up over the top and we're going to use a little bit of low tack tape to hold them in place So we're going to place our die over there. Let's put a piece of tape across there. And we're going to take our branch stamp, uh, branch die, sorry, and do exactly the same again. Tape across there. Get some this one. Matches in with this one here. Like so. So then a little bit of tape. Just across there. And then this one, I think it's this guy is that matches. There we go. It's like a little jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? So we'll pop that over there. Okay, and then I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine again. So I'm just using my Gemini. Again, I am just using my Junior plates through the Gemini today. Okay, so then when we take this away and push these through, you can see how we've got that foliage perfectly die cut there. 
okay? So we're gonna do exactly the same with the other piece, which is this one here. So I'm gonna take my dies and I'm gonna position these over the top. I feel like I'm working at a weird angle for you all again there. I'm trying my best. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to pop that one there and then we're going to pop the holly leaf over here. Little mini branch thing. Press there and then this one. Like so. So you can see how that's all positioned nicely on there. And then what we're going to do is pop our dies through our die cutting machine again. Okay. And then we're going to remove these from the dies again so you can see how they are perfectly die cut okay so i'm going to pop those out of the way just to one side i'm going to grab off the um the stamp that's like the little double pine branch and i'm going to pop that into a smaller acrylic block so i'm going to use that in a moment okay but what we're going to do with our foliage first is all the little branchy pieces like these bits here i'm going to leave the holly all of these bits we're going to add a little bit of glitter on too so on the little smaller ones i just added little dots of pva like this and then on the bigger ones i kind of just i don't think there's a technical term i just scribbled really just just scribbled with the glue just kind of little flicks you just want a little bit of glue on there then it'll just hold all of the lovely glitter in place so again, of course, I am using the Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue with the fine tip metal applicator. So that just makes life so much easier when you're glittering. And then I'm just going to take that lovely silver gilt glitter. You will notice that I am obsessed with this and it is on everything at the moment. I'm going to grab my tweezers just to try and pick up the little pieces. But you can see, look at the difference that makes. Can you see? I don't know if the camera is going to focus on it. It's that dazzling. <gasps> Look at the glitter. It's just amazing. So um, that's what I've done with all of these. So then when we tap away the excess glitter, you will see all of the amazing bling and sparkle that we've got on these. So I've picked that one up. And then it's like find the little die cut branch now, isn't it? Okay, so then you can see how we've got all those blinged right up. Okay, and then we're going to put that silver gilt back into the jar. Okay, and then what we're going to do next is again, we're going to pop these, put these to one side, just to give them a little bit of time to dry. Okay, like so. So while that's drying, um, we will build up our background on our card. So what I've done is your smallest square of crystal white that you've cut down, which in effect is going to be this piece here. Can you see how I've got the branches stamped onto it? We'll stamp and emboss that piece up now. So what you're going to do, I'll work off my piece of white paper just to show you. I would like to just dust this. There's a lot of glitter on this mat. Let's just dust that away. Straight onto me, that was not a logical thing to do, but never mind. I'm sure we all do this when we're in our craft room. Right then. So what we're going to do is take our smallest square of crystal white card. We're going to give it a good dust with an anti-static bag. Again, that'll just help to get rid of any fingerprints, any static that may be on there. We're going to take our clear embossing ink pad again, which is this one. And I'm going to take the little pine branch stamp. Now, because it's just a small stamp, I'm just taking the stamp to the ink pad. And all we're going to do is just randomly stamp around the edge. Over here. 
So this will just create like a lovely little border going around the edge of the card. So I'm going to do two sides at once, I think. So that's this one. So, okay, and then we're going to take our white scrap paper again, and then we'll use our silver dollar brow powder just to cover these. But you can see how it creates a lovely little border. So really, if you wanted to, you could be doing this and just popping a sentiment on, and that would look really pretty. powder okay so you can see how we create that awesome border around the edge so we're going to give it another little dust with the anti-static and then we're going to take our clear embossing pad re-ink the stamp And we're just going to work around the edge again. So exactly the same technique, just randomly stamping. Little branches all the way around the edge of your project like that. Okay. And then we're going to cover this with the silver dollar. Well powder. Now you can see where I've got a couple of little inky fingerprints. All I would do to those is just take a dry paintbrush and just dust away any excess parts on there. It's going to go back into the jar and we will heat these up again. So just going to use our heat gun. how fabulous that then looks. Okay, so we'll pop that to one side to cool. While that's cooling off, I'm gonna grab in another piece of that lovely swirly patterned paper. And I'm gonna grab in our um, fancy circles nesting dies. And what I'm gonna do is just pick two of these out of the centre, okay? And we're gonna create a little frame. So to do that, I just like to line my dies up like so, that looks about right to me. And then again, we're just going to take this into place on your own collage. Now what I can't sometimes find is when you're using low tack tape the first time, it can sometimes be a little bit too tacky with your pattern papers. So I've just detacked that a little bit on my jeans, just to kind of take some of that stickiness away really. So, if we pop that one there, just put that across there. Okay, again, I will just have to roughly trim round this just with using my junior plate. But again, some lovely scraps to use on another project. And if I just find my plate, we will just place this in and run it through the machine again. Okay, 
okay and then when we take that out we've got a lovely little frame perfectly die cut out okay then so what we're going to do now is we're going to start and build up our card base so i have got buried it under a piece of heat resistant acetate i've got a lovely piece of this stripy foiled paper and this is actually from the um the festive fancies foiled paper pad again all the details of the products i'm using are on the blog post and you can shop them all at chloe's creative cards dot co dot uk okay i'm also going to use a chisel tip glue pen these are due back in stock any day so please do keep an eye on the website and what i'm going to do to start with is i'm just going to drag that chisel tip glue pen along each of the sides like so and then we're going to cover that with our glass slipper glitter now, because I've put glue on that paper, I'm going to grab a different piece of scrap paper to do this. Oh, I'm ending up in the right mess here. Okay. You can see how that's then added that little glittery edge. I'm not going to put that glitter away, actually, because I'm going to use it again. I'm going to move this. These are all my little bits that are drying. I'm going to move those out of the way over to this side. And then I can put my glitter up there. Okay. So we've glittered that there. And we're also, we've then got a piece of crystal white card. I'm not going to glitter that one, but I am going to glitter my next patterned piece, which again is from that beautiful foiled paper pad. Okay. So I'm going to use my chisel tip glue pen just along the edge of here. And it's a lovely, like, the colour of this paper is a really pretty blue. It's a little bit of like a, I don't know, like a smoky blue. Really, really nice. So, glitter along the edge of there. And I'm just gonna dunk that in my glitter that I've just got off the camera here. Okay, and the chisel tip really makes a difference for adding your glitter around the edge there, okay? And then we've got a piece of our lovely silver non shared glitter card, a piece of silver mirror card to go over the top, and then we'll have our lovely stamped piece. Now, what I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to take my chisel tip again, I'm just going to edge along each side, like so. I'm going to put the lid back on my glue pen. And then again, we are going to cover that with some glass slipper glitter. Okay, and then we're going to pop that back into the jar. Like so. Okay. Get rid of that paper that's got the glue on because we're not going to need that now just going to check that you can see what i'm doing which you can okay so we're going to take an eight by eight card blank and we're going to start and stick all that some layers on so i'm just going to use kalal all-purpose glue to stick my flat layers down so just a little bit of glue to the back and then this is going to go down straight onto our card blank and obviously you can decide you want the stripes vertical or horizontal after mine vertical okay we're then going to stick our blue foiled paper to the crystal white paper we could do with a new bottle of glue here i think i'm really on the on the dregs there so a little bit of glue just around the back of here. It looks like I'm putting a lot of glue on, but I'm not really. I'm only putting a very small amount on and spreading it about. Okay, then we're going to flip this over and we're going to put some foam pads on the back of here. Now, of course, I'm using our fabulous foam pads on a roll. These are the three millimetre depth ones that I use, so they're a little bit thicker. 
um, but these are amazing and the feedback that you've all been giving us for these off the website has been fabulous so i'm so pleased that you are loving them they really do make your crafting so much easier because the backs are just super simple to peel off and then they just stick down onto your project give you that lift and dimension so it's going to go on to there we're going to then take our piece of silver glitter card and that's going to go on there with some foam pads as well I do like to put quite a few foam pads on my projects as well. <laughs> Normally when they are, they are a little bit heavier, so it is always nice just to make sure that everything's kind of well stuck down. Okay, so that one's going to go onto there. So you can see how that's coming together really nicely. And then we're going to have our silver mirror card. But before we stick that one on, I want to stick this piece down onto there. Now, you do have to be a little bit careful when you're using a solvent-based adhesive like Kalal when you're sticking onto mirror card. Because what you can find is if you get the glue onto the mirror card, it can strip the surface off. So just be very careful when you do this. Don't go right to the edges. Okay, because then it gives you the chance to push the glue out a little bit, but without it overspilling, if that makes sense. So then we can stick that down flat to there. I do just like using this glue because it does give you that little bit of time to kind of just manoeuvre things. It does take a few seconds to grab as well, just onto your mirror card. So we'll flip that over again. And then we're just going to use our foam pads onto the back of here, like so. Okay, and then we're going to take our card blank and we are going to stick this down to there like so. So you can see how that's really nicely come together now, all of our mats and layers. And we're going to stick our little frame into the middle too. You don't have to put this frame on if you don't want to, but I just think it adds a little bit of something. So what I'm going to do is just trim my foam pads down. If you find, because these particular scissors I'm using aren't non-stick, if you find that your foam pads stick to your scissors, dunk your scissors in your clear embossing ink pad, and then when you come to cut your foam pads, you'll find that the foam pads just ping off, which makes it a little bit easier. Sometimes if you've had a pair of scissors for quite a while, they like lose the non-stick coating on them. I'm just going to work around adding some foam pads onto here because obviously we want it to sit, stick well and we kind of don't want it to sag, do we, or anything like that. So we'll get these all nicely stuck on. Okay, then we'll take the backs off of these, like so. Then we're going to stick this down into the middle of the card blank, like this. See, my glue's just lifting a little bit there, so we'll just press that back down. Okay. So what we're going to do now is build up our poncetta. So we've got our base layer that we obviously curled between our finger and thumb a little bit earlier. So we're going to grab the patterned paper pieces in and we are just going to pinch down the middle of the petals like this. So just squish them with your finger and thumb. Always keep my thumb in the middle as well. And then that just means it gives you that little bit more kind of stability for when you are wanting to kind of shape the flowers and things. I'll do exactly the same with the next one here. Just building this up like so. So I'm just 
popping my index finger down the middle and then just squeeze in with my middle finger and thumb. Okay, and then we're gonna add some PVA glue just into the middle of the flower and we're just gonna twist and offset that slightly. I'm gonna add another bit of PVA and we're gonna do exactly the same again. So we then start to build up this beautiful big poncetta, okay? Then we're gonna take our acetate layer and what we're gonna do with this one is just fold the base of the petal in over like this. So you can't really shape acetate all that well, to be honest, because it is a plastic at the end of the day, so it's a little bit harder. So what I tend to do is just do that and then pop it on the top. So when I stick it, I always stick it with glue gel. Okay, so a little bit of Kalal 3D glue gel just in the middle. Then you can just place it down and kind of position it where you want. So I'm actually quite liking how that's fallen there. And then to do the centre, what I did is I just popped a big blob of my Kalal glue gel into the middle, like so. And then we've got our lovely new bling boxes coming very soon. So this is the Chloe's favourite one. So I took three of the big pearls and a few of the smaller pearls. Okay, and these are like a, they're a white pearl, but they've got an AB coating on them. So they are really pretty. So I basically just arranged these like this into the middle of the flower. So that's that. You can see, or you can really kind of build this right up, okay, and build your own like little blingy centers for your flowers, like so. And what I also did is on my holly flowers here for the foliage, I just put three little dots of glue like this, and I just took some of those pearls and just added these under here. Like so. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start to build the card up now. So I'm gonna bring this in and just Check where you're at, I feel like I'm moving the mat again. <laughs> so we'll pop that there. And then we're gonna add a blob of glue gel just under the back of that fabulous poncetta. I mean, ordinarily at home, I would kind of try and wait for my elements to dry <laughs> rather than just kind of diving straight in there. But Okay, we're gonna add the little, oh, see the little pearls, come on. See if we can get that stuck back on. There we go. I'm going to add this one in here and I'm going to add another one just over here. Okay, and I'm going to take the little smaller sprays. I'm going to tuck one down the bottom there. I'm just kind of tucking these in. I'm not being too careful how I stick them. I do always like to stick them with some 3D glue gel and it does just give you the chance to move them if you're not quite happy with where they're positioned. I'm gonna take the little double branch and I'm gonna tuck that one in there. But you'll see how it all kind of just starts to fill out and come together. I'll take that little individual one. I'll just tuck that behind there. Like so, and a little bit more glue. Actually, I think I might put switch this as well a bit. That one there, maybe. That one in there. There, and I'll break that off, and then we can put that one there. Okay, so you can see how pretty that then looks when it starts to come together. So we just need to do a little tag now. So what I've done is I've taken another piece of my crystal white card 
I'm going to give that a good dust with my anti-static bag, which I've put down somewhere. There it is. Give that a little dust over. I've got my Tis the Season sentiment, and this is from the Holly Tag Stamp and Die set. Just stamp that down. I'm going to use my Silver Dollar Wow Powder again. And go back into the jar. And I'll just quickly heat this up. So to do that, just going to use our heat gun. Like so. And then we're going to take our little tag. We're going to pop this over the top. I'm going to use a bit of low tack tape to position this into place. Okay, and then we'll run this through our die cutting machine again. See how we've got that lovely die cut tag. I'm going to pop this onto the corner. Now what I like to do with this is I like to use like a double layer of foam pads. So stick two together, pop that on there and then pop that across the corner like so. So you can see how that's coming together. So we just need to tie a bow now. So to do that I'm going to use our sparkling silver Lux ribbon. I'll stand up to show you this. So I'm going to take my ribbon, hang it over my index finger, like so, so it's like wrapped all the way around. Then I take it round my third finger, so it's like a figure of eight, round my index finger and back round my third finger. So this is to tie a double bow. And then turn that round, take the length, cross it at the back, grab it with my thumb. I take the shorter length that's trapped underneath and I just tuck it all the way around. And then I tie a knot like this. And then when you pull that off your fingers, you can see how you've got a lovely bow there. So then just take my scissors and just trim the ends off. And we are going to pop that onto our card like so. So I'm going to pop a little bit of glue gel just onto the back of there. And then we're going to take another one of our lovely pearls. Again, this will be coming soon. Please don't ask me about dates because I, I don't honestly know. I might just pop a bit more glue gel on there just to make sure it sticks real good. There we go. All right, not over here. <laughs> and we'll take a little bit of glue gel onto the back of that pearl. And we'll just stick that down. And that right there would be your finished card. So I really hope that you have enjoyed today's stamp along. If you haven't done so already, please do give the page a like or hop on over and subscribe on our YouTube channel where there are loads more videos and I'm sure there will be more going up very soon. There won't actually be a stamp along next week. So if you're watching this live, it will be the 4th of November, I believe. There won't be a stamp along because I'm actually off that day. Um, so there won't be a stamp along next week. But we will be back on track and have a project up for the following week. So please do hop over the blog on chloecreativecards.co.uk and have a little look on there. There is loads of inspiration and of course you can shop all of the products that I've used online at www.chloecreativecards.co.uk. I really hope that you've enjoyed that tutorial video and that we will see you again very soon. Bye everyone!